Wednesday, after the other boys had already been picked up by their parents or taken to the bus depot, Chris anxiously awaited his ride. His small suitcase was packed and ready to go. Just as he realized he was the last still waiting, Mary pulled up in the driveway. He sat his suitcase behind the car near the trunk as Mary came around the car and motioned him to her. She lovingly wrapped him in her arms and gave him a kiss on the forehead, explaining how pleased she was to have him for the holiday. Chris once again seemed lost in her warmth. She opened the passenger door and the boy, almost in a trance, took his seat beside her and off they drove. Did you notice that? Where's the suitcase? As they pulled in the circular drive to Mary's house, Chris looked out in awe. Obviously Mary was wealthy, the house appeared almost a mansion and the grounds leading up to it were nearly as large as the entire campus. To his surprise, they were greeted as they pulled up by a tall young woman dressed in a maid's uniform. Mary introduced the woman as Carolyn, her personal assistant and maid. The boy, his eyes glued to the woman in her short black satin dress and dark stockings and heels, blushed as Carolyn curtsied and, taking the lad by the hand, led him into the house. Dinner was about to be served, and after being shown the powder room where he could wash up, Carolyn ushered the boy into the formal dining room and seated him next to Mary at the large table. The table seemed almost too empty, but then Chris remembered that Mary had been recently widowed, and Mary explained that, like him, her daughter Susan had decided to stay on the west coast with friends for the holiday. Everything about the house was beautiful, it was huge and decorated with ornate lace curtains and fresh flowers on every table. Never had he been in such a wondrous place. As the two of them chatted, Carolyn served the meal. At such an impressionable age, his body and thoughts affected by the rush of hormonal change, Chris couldn't help but steal glances at the maid as she scurried about, her brief uniform showing off frothy white petticoats as she bent to place the various dishes on the table. Mary smiled knowingly at Carolyn as she took note of the boy's distraction. You've had a long day, Han. Why don't you draw a bath for our little guest, Carolyn, and he can get what I'm sure is some needed sleep. You'll be sleeping in Susan's room, Chrissy. Mary went on to explain. The boy noticed the affectionate manner in which she had addressed him, and while blushing slightly, liked the sound of it. Thank you. You've been so kind to me. With that, Mary excused herself and Carolyn led the youngster up a long curving stairway to make an early night of it. Following the young woman a step of two behind, Chris couldn't help but notice how her long shapely legs disappeared beneath the froth of petticoats. From this new vantage point, Carolyn also displayed the frilled garter tabs that held her stockings taut. Glancing over her shoulder, she smiled as she noticed the boy's stare and gave her hips a more pronounced wiggle to tease him further. She led the boy into his room for the weekend, and while he was too polite to say anything, he couldn't help but feel strange.